Welcome back to control. What the fuck? After what happened at school to Miss Mrs. Chester, we started spying on Tom and saw what they were, where they took the projector. Tom and his troglodytes were using the Sled Hill Cave as their headquarters. That's where the projector was. They had been using the temple site. We call it that, but it really was a broken concrete thing, like a warehouse or a bomb shelter or something very dark. The not mother lived there with her. Babies? Any children? I don't know. She was feeding Tom and the others her milk. They were changing into little monsters. We called them dunk monkeys. Unconfirmed existence of an additional slide designation temple. Unconfirmed existence of paranormal entity designation not mother. Annual evaluation of Dylan Faden, formerly P6, performed by Dr. Paula Vaughn. The questions asked here correspond to the fifth iteration of the Gunner's psychological assessment. Are you ready, Dylan? Let's begin then. In a single word, describe the world around you. What's Casper? Dr. Darling is out of the building today. He's never out. He didn't want to come, did he? He never visits, not since Robert. To tell Darling it wasn't my fault. I couldn't control it yet, but I can now. I learned. Will you tell him? In a single word, describe the world around you. A prison. A cold, empty prison. Not even a poster on the way. Mm -hmm. What is the next number in the sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, 15? 18. What day is it today? How the hell would I know? It's not like you give me a calendar. You find a rabbit in the woods. It is breathing, but not moving. You cannot see any blood. What do you do? Leave it. Expand on that. It doesn't matter. The rabbit's not real. None of it's real. What day is it today? Do you enjoy asking people questions that can't be answered? Is, is this what gets you up in the morning? What you dreamed of doing as a scared, stupid little girl? Can you describe a dog to me? In ordinary, we had a friend. Nosebleed Neil. And when it all went crazy, you know what I mean. Nosebleed Neil turned me into a dog. Or something like a dog. What day is it tomorrow? Fuck off! I don't know! There is no calendar! How can I fucking know? Dylan, calm down. Fuck you! Fuck you and fuck Casper! Hey, hey! Uh, are you watching this, you old fuck? Did you send a bitch because you're too scared of me? Where is Casper? Security, get a team in here. I need... Is she there? To, yeah, we have three points to spend. In the work work, launch large enemies when their health is low. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, launch large objects. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, this counted as large objects. That's a serious question, though. The second slide we called the meadow, but it was really just an empty lot with a bunch of weeds. There was a shack and a phone line. It smelled like flowers there. It was powerful, intoxicating. We had crazy dreams there. Um, it must have been because of the smell. I didn't like it. Didn't like losing control. In the dreams, everything was melting, and then when we would come out, everything had melted around the projector. Neil was really into it. They found out he had been coming uh, there more and more on his own. Then Tom beat the secret out of Neil and found the projector. He and his guns took it. We thought Neil had got lost inside the middle when Tom changed the slide, but that's not what happened. Unconfirmed existence of additional slide designation middle. Yeah, so he changed the slides and. 
see what they have on ordinary. This is what he claimed to do. It's all here. Our home, our school, the woods, the dump. And I guess it's still house. There's the dump. There's the dump. projector in the dump outside town. Did they recreate that too? Is that where they keep it? Wait, what? I didn't catch on doing that. Did they recreate what? Using the side projector? Finding it in the dump? You mentioned a poem last time we talked. By Thomas Zane? Yes. Beyond the shadow you settle for, there's a miracle illuminated. Hmm. I looked the poem up. Only I couldn't find any poet by that name. I did find a European filmmaker who moved here in the 60s, named Thomas Sane. What? I don't... No matter. It suits you very well, the poem. How you see things. Maybe you wrote it yourself. I didn't. No matter. You've said a few times that you feel like there's a piece of you missing. Can we talk about that? Okay. Yeah, um... It's... this... I feel... an emptiness. A yearning for something that I think I lost. It's natural for you to feel that way. Your brother and your parents are dead. No! No. Dulu's not dead. And that's not even it. You're referring to the imaginary friend from your childhood? Polaris. She's come back. After a long time, she's calling me. In a dream I saw, she... She showed me things. Jesse. It felt more real than anything. As real as what happened in Ordinary. The industrial accident in your hometown? That you believe Polaris caused? No, it wasn't an accident. There was no industrial accident, and Polaris didn't cause it. She saved me and Dylan. Just say... No! It was a cover-up. The government knows about it. There were agents there. Agents from... I don't know exactly, but they took Dylan. They... I'll find them. I won't stop looking. Polaris wants me to go to New York. There's a building there. I have to leave soon. I have to be there at a very specific time. Something... something hugely important is going to happen. Jesse, you know we can't let you go until you're well. And that begins by understanding what's real and what's imagined. Well, well I guess she did sound crazy. Oh, if you don't know what's going on, then it's just great. Details are largely based on the interviews conducted with Dylan Faden. See interviews blank and blank for relevant information. In the obtained therapy sessions of Jesse Fade and as well as circumstantial evidence found at the ordinary site. Note that accounts provided by all three sources contain conflicting data. Example, Dylan claims there were eight slides for the projector. Jesse uh, mentioned nine slides. The Bureau found one intact slide, designation 36, and the burnt remains of six others. Unfortunately, these slides are too badly damaged to be used in the projector. Jesse Faden is believed to be the individual responsible for burning the slides. Notes: Dr. Darling has ordered that the entirety of the ordinary town dump be brought to the Bureau for examination and analysis 
the hopes of finding additional slides or other altered materials. Due to the limited space of the, in the investigation sector, this AWE will be investigating in the containment sector. This place feels left abandoned. They, they took all oh, it, they really took the dam. They moved the whole landfill here in the middle of New York, and nobody saw a thing. Pretty unbelievable. Mm, people see what they want to see. By order of Dr. Darling, all work in the ordinary dam is to stop effective immediately. Resources will be allocated to the blank department. Details, details will be forthcoming. This area will be sealed at the end of the month. Please remove all personal effects before that time. Any photographic slides, the type used in the slide protectors, found in the area should be delivered to Dr. Darling immediately. So, yeah. In order for people to get out of here. The item was found in the penth penthouse suit at Blank, Toronto, belonging to David Wolf, who was being investigated for illegally dealing in altered materials. Bureau agents raided his penthouse and found numerous paranormal belongings, including Blank, Blank, and this item. Mr. Wolf was arrested. An uh, article from the Toronto Daily. So why would a 36-year-old Bay Street investment trader, Phil Ferret, married to a model, disappear overnight? That's the question that's kept Toronto High Society up at night this past week. Police say it's being looked into, some nut job radio show in the States claims he disappeared to join the Illuminati, but it's this reporter's opinion that Mr. Wolf, bored of his job, sick of his family, left it all behind to retire in some remote beach paradise. Now he's sipping my thighs while the world thinks he's dead. What the hell? Oh, they just vibe. This, what the hell is that blue little thing over there? I hate that sound. And I hate you. Really? Oh, shit. Okay, it didn't hit him. For some reason... That's interesting, apparently. Effective immediately. I'm setting up a new department. Dimensional research in the research sector. Uh, transferring the slide projector there. That's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to... I, I don't know when. Darling took the projector to the research sector. He dedicated a whole area to it, so he knew it was important. Dimensional research. That's where we go next. Okay. Both the lights went out and was... Kinda freaked out. Oh, I see this one. 
investigate the sector elevator in executive. What? Uh, wait, where's the... No. Okay. Sector elevator? Oh. Ow, how did I miss, miss that? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you go wound her up. Oh, there's another one. We went in and met Blaris like Star. She told us we were special, made us special. It felt like being born or reborn, the world fading in for the first time, familiar but somehow different. Polaris told us how to turn off the projector. The dung monkeys and the not mother were coming straight at us. Dylan was crying, I turned it off and they were gone. It was over. It took all the slides and I took all the sides and burned them. All of them except hand. Extrapolated. Unconfirmed existence of parental entity designation. Polaris. Yeah, we've been here. Okay, so we're going back to the executive. Oh no, where the hell is Hmm, I'm not really using the shield for this. Give me the levitation. Hmm, executive. Mm, well, do you wanna talk by any chance? What can I help? Yes, you do. Do you remember Mr. Tomasi, the head of communications? The hiss he was changed into showed up in containment, near the turntable. I'll take care of it. That thing's not getting away this time. I've heard reports about his particular use of language and intonation when repeating the his babbling. The biological and behavioral distinctions between different his corrupted individuals is truly fascinating. I wonder if I could categorize the data. And she's already off on her own thing. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's new. I've been seeing these darling presentations all over. Seems like he enjoys the limelight. So you noticed, huh? When he recruited me out of college, he actually came to visit. He interrupted my physics course by shouting, uh, not quite, professor, and then marching down to the front of the class where he proceeded to berate the very idea of laws of thermodynamics. Hey, he's been a showboat all his life. Darling visited you in college? Yeah, he read a paper I'd published, came to recruit me for the bureau. I accepted and then spent years waiting for access to the confidential research that Darling promised me. And whenever I ask about my access level, he just mumbles that it's temporarily postponed and then changes the subject to the effect of entropy on luck. I wonder who else Darling hit his work from. Marshall? Trench? Have you learned anything about Dylan's condition? Only that he's definitely his, but I guess his chanting made that pretty obvious. You know, interestingly, the words of the his incantation have an average length of four letters. The most common word used seven times is want. The next most common are through and time. That's very interesting, don't you think? I don't care about the words. What about my brother? Right. Sorry, I got a little off track. Well, strangely, his tissue samples all look healthy, unlike the other his I've tested. That's good news. Right? I wanted to talk to you about the crazy things I can do. My abilities. I get the sense that they're not very... usual around here. Well, usual and unusual aren't really benchmarks at the Bureau, but for some perspective, Director Northmore once used the floppy disk to send a bowling ball six yards through the air, and that was considered a huge deal. 
So compared to that, you are most certainly an outlier. An outlier. I like the sound of that. Okay. I should get going. Yeah. Don't let me hold you up. And I think we're gonna talk to Dylan as well. No new reports, Dylan Did you hear that his prison of the capture is the If I can only remember when Dylan is, and I think it's right here. Yep. Hello, do you have anything new to say? No. Okay. That's actually destroying my plan. <laughs> I wanted to talk to him a bit. Is it the Massey? Search for the slide projector. Yeah. Let's see. Why haven't we dissected that freak mutation we locked up? We can learn so much from its physiology. They want me to shoot you in the head. And we need to. We need to go to the court to look for Marshall as well. She's gone. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there, reaching for her, trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Phaeton sensed a drowning man, a hunger in the dark. What? Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear the whole. Oh, first of all, this. I don't remember this. Okay, this sounds like if they know they are having their butts on fire. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star and the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle. Trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away, and made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark, not unlike the hostile resonance, waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights went back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator door slid shut with practice bravado. Is that wake as in Alan Wake? Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? Yeah. Let's see. check this out. <laughs> okay, I was afraid that this is gonna be so dark. Can I have a flashlight? Please, I'm not stepping out of the elevator. If there's no light. Fine. Oh. Hello? Anyone here? Guess not. Mr. 
Kirkland. Here are latest agents confirmed confirmed missing, presumed dead, from the containment bridge yesterday. Jonathan Corner, Ezra Kras, Caroline Dempsey, letters of condolence will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending them to their families. You will be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. Also, per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were backed up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations were not archived yet, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the fire break. They're lost, I'm afraid. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the bureau. Kinda? Per authorization of Mr. Kirkland, internal investigation was launched into the et ethical practices of Dr. Darling, head of research. Despite the accounts of anonymous blank regarding inhumane treatment of a blank currently housed in the bureau, our official fin findings regarding this were inconclusive. inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during this investigation. The majority of blank sector personnel seem to be wholly unaware of any such blank contained there. One blank confirmed the blank's code name to be blank, but all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest uh, clearance level. Investigators were similarly blocked from entering the blank research wing to interview its staff. The matter was further complicated by the lack of clarity on whether non-human paranormal entities warrant humane treatment. While this investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into blank research. <gasps> Dr. Dennis, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all our files on Bright Falls specifically on the disappearance of the author Alan Lake. Alan Wake. <laughs> per the Interagency Information Exchange Agreement, I had some paper pressures gather up a folder of all the pre-approved files. Don't worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. But I'm writing to let you know that we received this request from us from a special agent named Alex Casey. Sounds familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of the fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the most famous character Alan Wake wrote is looking into a case dealing with a writer's fiction coming true. I think this is worth looking into, but what's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance on this guy. Okay, any f with all the stuff right, happening around you are. Uh, you think it's strange that the guy is having the same name as the fictional character? To Chief Investigator Dennis. It happened again, third time this year. Something certainly has it out for our plan. Could be raccoons, the locals, the locals certainly complain about them enough. But why the hell would raccoons keep going after a monitoring station? Doesn't add up. Anyway, I got a bureau take going to the site next week to take a look. Next on the list of recurring problems is the stuff at the Lake House research, research station. How am I supposed to effect effectively keep an eye on blanks like if they won't let me see any data? Well, I don't even know what they're researching out there. We need to petition them again to share their into info with investigations agent. It's only a matter of time before this blank hits again and I want to be prepared. Anyway, if anyone at HQ asks why the Bright Falls report is a little thin this month, tell them it's because we couldn't take any readings. In the meantime, I might invest in some raccoon traps. Uh. Oh, I'm sure you should. <coughs> Dr. Raya Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom, where she teaches biology with a focus on botany. Dr. Underhill once worked with the Bureau as a parabotanist stationed in the research station on the, of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. Dr. Underhill has no known connections to paracriminal organizations or any record of breaching her NDA, 
NDAs since leaving the Bureau. The civilian behavior has been ideal, with the exception of an ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Baring that appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and were visited intermittent, intermittently ever since. Depending on the duration of her work in the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. This investigation has found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Daring's request to offer Dr. Underhill an interim position with the aim to finding a solution to the mold threshold issue. I'm gonna die after this. Her authorization from Mr. Crinkling Bank Blank was launched into the blank of Director Zakarak Change. A recent change in blank witnessed in Director Change, including aggressive blank, when blank with other stuff has been observed. However, this investigation is aimed at interpreting this issue rather than proving it. Notable blank between Director Trench and Dr. Darling has been witnessed by numerous bureau staff. Although both declined to meet for an interview on the matter, witness accounts suggest there are arguments centered around the dimensional research wing and the blank kept inside. However, no evidence exists to confirm Dr. Trench's blank as anything more than interpersonal disagreements. This investigation has concluded that Director Trench's behavior is not indicative of any blank and that his fitness to lead is not in question. Refer to blank for full report. There are two left. Okay, we can do this. Chickling. I am growing tired of your blight, bla blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know you want this to be true, but you are head of, the, of investigation. This is this failure is, is your responsibility. What did you think would happen holding a dangerous specimen investigations? The containment sector exists for a reason. They are better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they have admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think you're Petty internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate program only failed because of Darling. You're both failures plotting against me. You are traitors. But the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. Sakara Trench. Oh, okay, you don't have to read anything. But since I remember this, one left report to read down on the lower floor, I'm gonna end this part here before my voice give, gives up entirely. So, for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!